Okay, this is the most efficient practice I've ever seen. Adult coaches have nothing on these kids. This is SportsCenter. Hey, I'm Luca Celebre, filling in for Marissa Roberto. And Canada was back in action at the World Juniors. Our boys are coming off a solid 5-2 win in yesterday's opener against Finland, and they were hoping to keep things rolling against Latvia, who got pumped by the host Sweden 6-0 yesterday. Just over five minutes in, Canada on the power play when Connor Geeky absolutely snipes it far side. His first of two comes just four seconds into the man advantage and opens the scoring. Less than two minutes later, Macklin Celebrini with a beautiful rush drops it off for Braden Jaeger, and the Pens first rounder makes no mistake. Incredible first touch by Celebrini to start the rush, nutmegs the defender before setting up Jaeger, Canada doubles its lead, they were up two after one. Early second, after Canada already added another goal, check out the move by Carson Rakoff. Dangles and delivers for an absolute beauty, Celebrini forcing the turnover and picking up another assist on an early goal of the tournament candidate by Rakoff. Six minutes later, Matthew Wood with a great stretch pass for Celebrini, and he buries on the backhand, extends the lead to five zip. Ridiculous pivot by the projected first overall pick before tucking home his second of the tourney. Already four points through two periods. Now, less than halfway through the third. Canada already with three more goals tacked on when Celebrini spots Rakoff for his second of the game. Canada with four goals in just over four minutes, Celebrini with his fifth point and sixth in two games. And Canada would add another goal and finish with a dominant 10-0 victory, improving to a perfect 2-0 to start the tourney. So here's an early look at the Group A standings. Canada leads the way, but the surprise has to be Finland still winless after meddling in three of the last five tourneys. The Finns were upset earlier today by Germany, and our boy Corwin got to experience their celly up close and personal. Stay safe out there, Corwin. In Canada's next game of the prelims comes your way Friday, when they face their stiffest competition yet in the host Sweden. Coverage for that one begins at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TSN. <laughs> All right, it's time to bring in some bar down friends from Sweden. It's Jesse Pollock. Jesse, how you doing, buddy? What's up, Chili? Wrapping the old school TSN shirt, baby. All right, you guys have been pumping out a ton of content so far from the tournament. Who's been your favorite player to watch up close, though? I think of all the players I've had the pleasure of watching so far, Lane Hudson's got to be number one for me. I mean, this guy kind of looks like a mini Kale McCarr, which I know you'd love, Luca. He's so smart with the puck, so quick, makes very quick decisions, and I just think he's going to immediately be a good NHL player next year. Speaking of content, we've seen some weird pregame routines. I feel like we always see it at these tournaments a little more. Is there someone's routine that stands out to you guys as being maybe the weirdest? There have been some weird pregame routines. I know Corwin pointed out Connor Geeky's, which was very strange. He like walks backwards off the ice. It's like nothing surprised me with that guy, hey? But another guy who has a bit of a weird one was Rutger. My boy Rutger McGroarty from your Winnipeg Jets. He was doing like this kind of strange stick handling thing. I don't know if it's because he obviously was like coming off of an injury or something or he's getting used to his hands back, but I don't know. It was a little weird. And lastly, I can't let you go without asking about food. What's the best thing you've eaten so far in Sweden? And please tell me it's meatballs. The craziest thing Corin and I have eaten so far was steaks that we actually had to cook ourselves on Blackstone. And honestly, I think not cooking my steak enough may have caused me to get a little sick. I've been in my hotel room all day. My stomach has not been feeling well. So that's probably it. Thanks, Jesse. Appreciate it. Thanks, Luca. You may have seen some memes this weekend about what Detroit had to sacrifice for the Lions to win the NFC North for the first time. And unfortunately for Pistons fans, it had to be their squad. <laughs> As they set a dubious record with their 27th straight loss. Dropping the second game of a home and home with Brooklyn by just six points. The loss broke a deadlock with the 2010-2011 Cavs, who had just lost LeBron to Miami. And the trust the process Sixers from a decade ago for the longest skids within a single season. 
So now the last mark they're gonna have to try avoiding at all costs, the longest losing streak of any of the big four sports, which includes streaks that span multiple seasons. Those same trust the process Sixers hold that mark after losing the last 10 games of the 2014-15 season and the first 18 games of the next campaign. Now here's a different way to look at it. Ja Morant has already led Memphis to twice as many wins as the Pistons in just his first week back from suspension. While the Rangers and D-backs won World Series games more recently than the Pistons have won. Arizona's only win in the Fall Classic actually wrapped up about 90 minutes after Detroit's last win on October 28th. So when will the streak end? Detroit's last two chances to avoid this final mark of shame just so happen to be the final games of the calendar year. They've got one in Boston, who are a perfect 14-0 at home. And then home against Toronto on Saturday, with the Raps traveling from Boston on the second end of a back-to-back, -back, this spells us. We are, we are gonna be the one. So it seems the stars are aligning that way, but then again, this Pistons team is just really, really bad. For more on whether the odds could truly be in Detroit's favor against Toronto, it's our gambling guru, Wes Chang. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, FanDuel's got that game against the Raptors as Detroit's best chance to end this losing streak over the next three weeks. At plus 180, is that enough value for you to actually suggest betting on the Pistons against the Raptors Saturday night? I don't want to be the guy to rag on the Raptors, but let's just say I know some people who got this bet at plus 500 a week or two ago as the streak was really building up. The reality is Toronto at this state should be at that price. There's only one game in between for Detroit. It's the Celtics. That's likely not going to happen. Hypothetically speaking, if the Raptors do lose this game, break the streak for Detroit, I do worry it will be a major catalyst, kind of the straw that breaks the camel's back, that forces the front office's hand to really start looking into making a move and recalculate what the future is going to be for this team. Before we get there, the Raptors are actually back in action tonight, trying to snap a three-game losing skid of their own. So they kick off a three-game road trip to end the year in Washington. What's your best bet for tonight? I like Daniel Gafford to go over 11.5 points, which is the line currently set on FanDuel. If you look at the game log of rim running centers against the Raptors this month, it's been really bad. I'm not even including guys like Nikola Jokic or Joel Embiid. Look at guys like Nick Richards, Clint Capella, both centers who play the Raptors twice this season. They've all scored well above their season averages. Toronto's defense has been really porous in the month of December. Daniel Gafford's in a really good spot here. He's way more involved in the offense versus the beginning of the season. He's up to 13.9 points per game in December. He's covered this line 7 out of 10 times this month. I think it's a really good spot for him against this Raptors defense. Great to see you again, Wes. Thank you. You too, Luca. The holiday break is officially over in the NHL. And we're back with another round of the Battle of Ontario tonight in Toronto. The Leafs come into this one with a 2-2-1 record in their last five games. And their sights are set on closing that gap between them and Boston for first place in the Atlantic. Meanwhile, the Sens are just trying to get out of the NHL's basement, having lost seven of their last 10 games overall. The story on the Toronto side of the matchup is none other than Austin Matthews. And he's probably the only player that wanted to play through the holidays because he's scoring at an unbelievable rate. Matthews has scored in seven straight games and he's lit the lamp 14 times in his last nine outings which is one less goal than the Sharks have scored in their last seven games combined as a team. And Matthews isn't the only one scoring for Toronto over this torrid stretch. Mitch Marner has eight of his 13 goals this season in the last 11 games alone. And even though William Nylander has only scored four goals in his last 11, he's still producing with 18 points during this streak. This is all bad news for Ottawa because they absolutely leak goals. We're talking the fifth worst goals against per game as a team, and the second worst penalty kill percentage at 71.3%. On paper, this is a horrible matchup because the Leafs are humming along at a 33.3% clip with the man advantage over their last eight games. <laughs> now, we usually end our Tuesday show with our anytime goal scorer picks. But the NHL was still on its holiday break, so we're gonna dive into that today. Now, Marissa has been rolling, which makes me nervous. She's hidden each of the last two weeks, first with Connor Bedard and last week with Leon Dreisaitl. And both players were actually the only players to score for their squads in losing efforts. 
but I think I might be able to take a page out of her book and also ride with the freshman phenom. I'm taking Bedard at some sneaky plus 180 value to bury against your Winnipeg Jets tonight. I mean, he's already come through twice for Marissa this season. He's gotta come up with one for me too, right? The 18-year-old currently leads all rookies in goals, assists, and points this season. And even though his team will probably lose to a much better Winnipeg team, I think he's due for a big night at home. If you look at his splits, it's actually quite surprising. He's had a lot more success on the road this season, scoring 11 of his 13 goals away from the United Center. But maybe he'll be energized with some time off and ready to turn a new leaf and get fans cheering in Chicago. And Bedard went into the break on a heater, racking up six points over a four game point streak. If he gets on the board, it'd be his first career five game point streak, and it would see him maintain his point per game pace that he's maintained since the end of October. Viewers in the Jets region can see if my prediction comes true tonight when Winnipeg visits Chicago. Coverage begins at 7.30 Central on TSN3. That's all for today. I'll be back here tomorrow at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. Have a great day, everyone.